Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another stream here on our American Family Insurance Dream Bank page. If you're looking for more of our Dream Bank content in the new year, I highly encourage you to check out our newly redesigned website. We've added downloadable resources to help you with your dream pursuit in whatever that may be, including a digital copy of our journals. I will drop the link in the comments in just a minute. My name is Hannah and I'm a dream curator here at the Dream Bank. And tonight I have the honor of introducing our moderator, Jessie Betty, Jessie Vetter. She is by far one of the most talented people I've personally had the privilege of introducing here at Dream Bank. And I'm extremely excited to have her along with her incredibly talented panel joining us this evening. Jessie is from Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, and throughout her hockey career, Jessie has been a part in winning three national championships, two Olympic medals, and six world championships. She graduated from the University of Wisconsin and is a member of the UW Hall of Fame. In addition, Jessie is an American Family Insurance brand ambassador, and most importantly, a mother to her two children, Brady and Jordy. Yes. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our moderator for tonight's event, Jesse Better. Thank you, Hannah. That was very nice. And uh, just a shout out to the Dream Bank and American Family Insurance for having all of us here tonight. It's a, uh, gonna be a fun night, just a conversation with a group of my good friends, good teammates, and uh, just see where it goes. Uh, so first I just wanna introduce uh, who we have here tonight, and the first one is Brianna Decker. If you hear me call her Brie or Decker, I apologize. That's just kind of how we called each other as teammates, as they will call me Vetter or Jesse, one of the two, so you guys don't get confused. Uh, but Decker is from Dousman, Wisconsin. She is a national champion and a UW grad. Uh, she is an Olympic champion, a world champ, and still a current member of Team USA. Thanks for being here, Deck. Thanks, Bets. The second panel is Alex Rigsby, is from Delafield, Wisconsin. She is a national champion, also a UW grad, an Olympic champion, a world champ, and a still holding the goalie strong, a current member of Team USA. Thanks for being here, Alex. Excited to be on it. And the last member, the only Wisconsin native, I had to break it up a little bit, uh, Erica is from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. She is a three-time national champion, a UW grad, an Olympian, and a world champ. Thank you, Erica, for being here. Thank you for inviting me. This is of a course, pleasure. Of course. Anything for an opportunity to be chatting with you again. Well, thank you. I, I feel the same. I definitely have uh, thought about who I want on the panel that would have a good time and uh, make some good conversation. Uh, so we can jump right into it. And just, uh, it's. I think it's a question that we all have gotten whether we're at a school or talking to a business. And um, it's a question of, you know, growing up, did you play multiple sports? Um, and if so, is it something that you kind of recommend for a athlete growing up? Should we, go, should we go like oldest to youngest here? Like Erica, yeah, oldest to youngest, we'll go first. Erica. Well, that would be me actually, but Erica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for taking that one on. Um, yes, but you know, I'm turning 34 next week and I've already grieved like so much. And I think I've now accepted. I'm moving on. It's fine. You know, I'm 34 and thriving. I'm 35. I'm start, okay. Boy, you are young. Yes. Happy yeah. early birthday. Um, Yes, that's really America. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. I'm trying to just absorb all the nice, happy thoughts for my birthday. Soak it all up. Yeah. So, <laughs> multiple sports. Um, absolutely. I played multiple sports all growing up. Um, I feel like it's one, the best way to figure out what sport you like the most, what sport you're most passionate about. Um, just being exposed to a bunch of different things helps kids figure out really what they're good at, what they feel confident doing, what they want to, what they want to be good at, and what they want to pursue. So right there, it just sets you up in a good place to sort of, you know, be grounded by something that you're passionate about as a kid. But also, as you grow up, it's important to do a bunch of different sports because, as I was just saying, I'm 34 now. I'm really feeling it in my joints. I, I'm, you know, I'd say there was multiple times in my career where I probably hit burnout even, um, but. 
to prevent that, that's why it's so important, I think, for youth athletes to be playing multiple sports. Um, I'm sure Decker and Alex agree with me on that one. But um, yeah, I think to avoid burnout, it's so important also to just increase athleticism, right? Like, I mean, that's you were you were the person on the team that literally play like any sport and it pissed everybody off. I'm sorry, it, it made everybody really mad. Um, I didn't mean to do that. Ugh, shoot. Um, I'm going to totally get in trouble for that, but that's like, you know, I always have a tendency to run my mouth a little bit too much, but um, anyways, you were just so good at every sport and we'd all get frustrated because you, you know, you could pick up a basketball and shoot three pointers. You could pick up a volleyball and serve it, you know, or spike it. And I'm like, I I love that guy, you know? yeah, I know. I, I give you a lot of credit on that one. I don't think you could do basketball really that well, um, but you definitely rocked the volleyball uniform. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Eric, Eric, I covered a lot. You know, the, <laughs> oh, you did a great job. Um, no, well, first off, that's like golfing is your like go to. Like, I always go to that's your true. golf event every uh, every year, right? And I appreciate try that. to, anyways. Yeah, and that's always supporting fun. that and the Children's Hospital. Yeah, usually my favorite hole is when you uh, can shoot the ball for me. So that's usually yes. I can't wait to get to that one. Yeah, I enjoy that one too. I get the opportunity to see that. Yeah. Um, but along, I mean, when, when I was younger, I loved playing a lot of sports. Uh, my main three were like soccer, obviously hockey, and then softball. Um, the one thing that I have taken away so much is you meet different types of teammates, um, mm -hmm. depending on what sport you're playing. And like, that's one thing that I loved is like, it's crazy how passionate, like the softball girls were about softball and then soccer girls were and the soccer boys were about soccer. And, um, they were so different compared to my hockey teammates, but I loved that. And I cherished it. And I think I grew as an athlete just because I was surrounded by so many different personalities. So, um, that's, I think that's one huge takeaway that I would encourage young kids to get involved in so many sports. Um, I think you can learn a lot from a different teammates. Yeah, I mean, you guys both just like covered it perfectly, but definitely played multiple sports growing up. Mm -hmm. I was really lucky my parents just kind of like threw us and stuff to keep us busy. And sometimes I think they, it overwhelmed us as they were taking us to soccer practice, picking us up, taking us to hockey practice. And um, it was a ton of, you know, different things going on as we were kids. But you know, it teaches you that those different um, characteristics that you can take on throughout life. Like I still remember my lacrosse days and playing lacrosse with, you know, running up and down the field, meeting people from high school and getting to know those girls and um, playing soccer. I love playing soccer as a kid. And um, I think it just helps your athleticism so much and it's so important in your overall growth as a, you know, young person and a child. And um, definitely carries over into our sport of ice hockey as well. So it's been, it was really fun playing a ton of different sports growing up. And one thing that I've definitely got more into as I've gotten older, especially this past summer with COVID going on was golf. So can't wait to, to golf with vets one of these days soon when I get back up to yeah, Madison. I was gonna say when you're back in town, you're down in yeah, we'll definitely have to go yeah. hit some balls. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think those were all good points. I think from each sport, uh, you can kind of benefit from what you learn from one sport and transition it over, you know, footwork and soccer. And Alex and I, we are covering this really small little crease, but we have to get from point A to point B pretty quick. And with our feet, they need to be kind of underneath us and in, under control. And I think soccer is one of those things that kind of translated pretty well for us. And I know us three, we'd be juggling before every game, getting loose and getting ready to go. So I, I definitely think multiple sports is a huge benefit uh, throughout your youth and it will help you become a better athlete and better player in whatever sport you may be a part of. Were you goalie in soccer too? I was. Yeah, I don't That's know how you did that. Like, <laughs> that is a completely different type of position going from like covering this much space to also like this much space. Yeah. You had a lot more time to react as well. So it, it was uh, definitely different comparing the two, but both both, both a lot of fun. Um, so growing up, did you guys have a certain role model that you kind of had? Are we going all this to youngest again? Or youngest to oldest this time? We go back around, Alex. The yeah, the yeah I can start. Um, I would say like, as I was a young kid, um, definitely my mom, she pushed me a lot to kind of, you know, pursue my dreams in a way. And 
she grew up and she was a really great athlete and she was a really big runner and she always inspired me to play with the boys. She was always, you know, she was the person when she was in high school, she wasn't able to play run with females. They didn't have a female track team. So she was running with the guys. And so um, she always told me stories about the adversity that she overcame. So um, definitely a role model as a, as a kid and, and still as a role model to me today as she's overcome a lot too. And, um, you know, I think too, I just look at it as my support system too. You know, I got my parents, I have my husband, I have, you know, all those coaches that grew up, um, you know, believing in you and pushing you and making sure that you're kind of on the right path to whatever it is that you want to succeed at. So, um, definitely really lucky to have a lot of different role models and, um, a different support system growing up. Yeah. So yeah, for me, um, like when I was like way younger, I looked up to my grandpa a lot. Um, I just, his, he stills working out there raking leaves right now and he's like 87 years old. So he, um, just his work ethic alone is something I always looked up to and I always wanted to be like him. Um, but from like a hockey standpoint, I'm actually gonna, well, Cami Granado, obviously she played for the U S team, captain of the U S team in 98, but, um, Sis Paulson, former Badger. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, actually, I, love uh, I looked up to her quite a bit. I went to yep. the first game at the Cole Center uh, for the Badgers, and um, I just like I always I thought she was. I mean, she was my height. Um, and well, Eric, very Christian tall, too, very right? yeah, <laughs> yeah, very tall. Yeah, um, but I just like again, someone who worked hard, someone who just seemed to like go get it out there, and um, mm -hmm. I just I looked up to her when I was younger, and I loved looking like watching the Badgers play. It's true. All right, my turn. Role models, so. I would say I was like really one of those headstrong kids like that was like, I'm not going to look up to anyone. I'm going to be my own person. You know, I'm going to be <laughs> me and everyone's going to love me and all that. I was kind of in that place, um, really stubborn and um, just had a lot of confidence at a really young age um, because of hockey, actually. But, um, you know, as you get a little older, things change. I think ultimately, like, I was just really stubborn and didn't want to admit that I really, really looked up to my dad. And hockey was a place where I could really connect with my dad. Um, you know, he he worked all day. We, 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 we grew up in a really traditional household. My mom stayed at home and raised the kids. My dad went to work. I, I didn't really see him a lot, you know. So when we did get to have those moments on the ice together, it was really where we connected. So... I'd say that he was, um, yeah, he was probably my my role model. Um, I just don't like to give him that kind of credit, you know. I just, <laughs> I, I get stubborn with that. But yeah. he's a good guy. He he, came, yeah. he was very supportive. Came to so many better events and new events over the year. He's yeah, he's a real guy. short, stocky guy. He's a real oh, short, yeah. stocky guy. And and and, and the Vetter family I'll call them the refrigerator whenever yeah. we go. To yeah, give him a little shout out there. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would have to say uh, from a non-hockey side, it was probably my brothers, um, just from pushing me and getting me involved in every single sport that we had. Um, they kind of, I was just that younger sister that wanted to be involved in anything they were doing. And uh, whether they wanted me or not want me, I wanted to be uh, playing with them in whatever sport it was. Uh, so definitely them. For the hockey side, I think I was still – I think I was old enough where I didn't really, I was more males. It was the Patrick Waz, the Mike Richter and the Curtis Josephs that were on my wall, which I, I think is awesome that uh, Decker is now a female role model. And I think now these days with young girls growing up, I think Alex and Brianna still playing, you know, have an opportunity to be females for those girls coming up, which is pretty awesome to see. And, you know, maybe, maybe Mia Hamm, for soccer wise, but um, yeah, it, it was all male school for me growing up, but it's exciting to see more females being role models as, as we get older and you guys still currently playing, which is really cool. The I next, what? I love that too. I have to say the first yes. female like role model in, in a hockey sense that I had was Chrissy Wendell and Natalie Darwitz. And yes. it was my senior year in high school. It was the first time I'd ever yeah, seen them late, play. Very I've late. never seen any, any duo. So mind blowing. Yeah. Really yeah. good. You know, and yeah. I remember just being like, whoa, I have not been exposed to this, you know? Um, yeah. 
But yeah, I was really cool to see them play. Yeah, now, it's, now it's anybody and everyone, and it's it's awesome to see. Yeah, Chrissy and yeah, now well they're too close in my age, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I was on my visit to Florida, and I saw that's when I saw them play live, yeah. and I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're good. Very, very nice people. Great, great role models for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, so growing up, did you guys uh, always uh, dream of playing in college? And um, why UW? I always, I always like to ask why UW. Maybe it's a little bit more obvious for Alex Decker and I. But uh, so, growing up, did you always dream of uh, playing in college? <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'll start this one, the middle child in this group here. Um, yeah, yes, I um, grew up, I have a fun story about this one, actually. Um, so in fourth right. grade, we write a letter to ourselves. Um, this is what we did at our school in good old Dallas, Wisconsin. Um, you write a letter to yourself, and you get this letter when you graduate high school. So cool. pretty cool. Um, hmm. And... So in fourth grade, I mean, I don't remember what I wrote in fourth grade. And then I get this letter and I'm like, sweet. And it said, I want to play for the UW Badgers and I want to be a dentist. And I was like, okay, <laughs> dentist clearly didn't happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I, I just like, I always wanted to play for the Badgers. I grew up, in, like I said, watching them. And I grew up like idolizing Sis Balson and why, <clears throat> YUW, um, because why not? Why would you, why would I go anywhere else? <laughs> yep. um, but it was a harder decision, obviously, when the time came down to it. Like, you know, my junior year in high school, figuring out where I wanted to go. Um, and I went to prep school in Minnesota. So then I was getting pulled towards the Gophers a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just, I always wanted to play for the Badgers. Nothing better than um, the red and the white. So good answer. Okay. Any teachers listening, I would take note on what uh, Decker School did because that was pretty cool. My parents' address didn't change either, so <laughs> I have not. You had a big on that. Years. Big on that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, did I always dream to play in college hockey? No, that wasn't like my first dream because. Like the U.S. women women won in 1998, and that was before the Badger program even existed. So that was my first exposure to women's hockey because at that point I was six. Um, so that was my first exposure. So like role models were like, or like people I looked up to were, you know, um, Cami Granado, Angela Ruggiero, like all those players from that team, and so that started. And then I was first exposed to women's hockey when I was playing that good old capital ice and mm -hmm. that's where the Badgers used to play. Yep. So my brother actually brought me home a Badger poster for women's hockey when he was there too. And so that was pretty cool. Cause I got to hang that up in my room. And then um, my first ever women's college game was when I was in sixth or seventh grade, and that was at the new Gopher rink. So I, my first college game was the Gophers, and so from that point on, I was like, "Wow, they're this hockey is so good, and this is what I want to do." And so um, my first college visit was to Wisconsin, and I was super pumped. I was a freshman at the time, and went to it, and they're showing you all the whistle that they have there and the perks, and you know you're treated like royalty. So obviously that was a top choice of mine immediately, but my parents um, kind of had me keep an open mind on things and not closing the doors too soon. So I made sure to kind of visit a lot of schools out East. And it's obviously a different situation for a goaltender too, because you kind of have to look like, okay, who's graduating and who's going to be around. And that's was graduating the year before I was to come in and then I was coming in. So we didn't ever get to play together, but no. she was definitely a person I got to watch growing up. So that was really cool. Um, you know, I obviously aspired to be like Jesse and, um, so yeah, once I kind of took my visits and thought about it pretty hard, I ended up coming into the university of Wisconsin and honestly the best decision could have ever made. So yes. very happy with it. The state would have not have been happy with it any of you if you decided to go somewhere else. So. <laughs> well, Thank I remember you. Bree and I were having so many conversations about it because we kind of committed around the same time, did we not? Like you committed pretty late. I committed super late and like- <laughs> I was, We were keeping everybody on their toes, you know, making everyone <laughs> late. 
Where is Coach, Coach gave yeah. me a hug when I finally committed. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was very happy to have you. Uh, Both of so, fun. so funny. Well, me being from Massachusetts, I did not have the same exact pull towards the Midwest, but I did know that I wanted to check it out to see what it was all about. Um, I originally wanted to go to an Ivy League school because I'm like, well, I can't play hockey forever and thought it was like a smart plan to do. And then I was like, okay, well, I have to work really, really hard to try to get higher than like zero points on my SATs to get into an Ivy League school. So I started tutoring for that. And then I ended up going to my Wisconsin visit and the things, the way that you people in the Midwest approach sports is amazing, right? It's absolutely mind blowing. You guys love your sports in the Midwest. Out East, it's not the same. Um, but yeah, it was the coolest thing. Bells and whistles. Talk about bells and whistles. I'm such a bells and whistles gal, you know? Like, I am the bells and whistles person. Like, how many pairs of shoes do you get every year? Whoa, how many sticks? I can order whatever pair of skates I want. Like, no way. You know, all those kinds of things that obviously matter to me. But, um, also Mark Johnson being the coach there was like a huge, huge, um, you know, huge pull or a huge draw to the school. So I think ultimately I chose Wisconsin because it's amazing. There's, it's really one of like a, such a one of a kind sports school. And my goal was to get to the Olympics someday. So I really wanted to like get into and dive into and submerge myself in that kind of really big sports culture. Um, it's really helps with motivation too, actually. So, yeah. That's true. I was trying to remember if I remember your visit, but I, I don't, cause I would, I would have been a freshman. Oh, I went to a football game. It just, I, I just remember the wave, the wave going around Rant Leg. I was at it's Randall Stadium, they right? Just, the they wave. Were, I'm like, oh. They really wanted you to took you to a football game. You were, you were a big yeah. deal. I know. I know. It was a hot commodity at the time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, for me, obviously, I, I, I think I always wanted to go to Wisconsin, but I don't think I wanted, knew I wanted to play hockey in college at any point until Wisconsin got hockey because they got hockey later on in comparison to other schools. The Ivies have been there for a while. I forget the year that Wisconsin got it, but I think I was in high school. So I, I don't think it was until high school where I realized I had an opportunity to be playing college and even more so when Mark and Dan and Tracy at that time, not Jackie, uh, started to come to some of my games and practices and then you know, that turned more into the dream of going to Wisconsin and then playing um, hockey there. And obviously, like Alex and Decker, growing up in Wisconsin, you want to wear the Cardinal in red. If you have that opportunity, we were born and raised going to Badger Sporting events. So it was pretty special when, you know, we finally signed that letter of intent and had an opportunity to play there and obviously enjoyed every second and was very happy to experience it with Eric for the majority of the time. Never got to cross paths with Alex and Brianna, but we played later on with the U.S. team. But uh, Eric and I had some good times playing at UW together, that's for sure. Yeah. This question is not for Eric and I because we never had an opportunity to do this. This is for Alex and Bree. It's very weird to call you Bree because I never call you Bree. But yeah, just call me Dex. Alex, <laughs> Alex and, uh, Alex and uh, Decker is uh, just kind of your experience playing at the Le bon. How was it, the atmosphere? Everything oh, I'm so that jealous. I'm so and jealous. I, I say, Alec, Eric and I cannot answer this question because mm -hmm. we were at college. We did not play at Taliban. It did not exist. Um, we played at the Cole Center. So even if you had a thousand people, it was empty because the Cole yeah. Center is for those listening that have been to the Cole Center understand what we're saying. But um, back to the question, uh, Alex and Decker, how was it playing at the Laban? Well, we, we lost our home opener, so that was great. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great you start. Did? Yep. Yeah. Against who? The Midgey. Oh. Way to ruin yep. that. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. We ended up losing the program. We ended up, listen to this. We ended up losing one nothing because I got clotheslined behind the net playing the puck. Okay, we remember <laughs> this. We remember this. We remember it's a good one to laugh. Why were you playing the puck, Alex? What were you doing? 
Oh, I yeah. know that was, that was before I was even comfortable doing it, so I should have yeah. just known better. <laughs> yeah. um, Step one: stay in the net. No, I'm yeah, <laughs> no, Don't but we, we we lost the home opener. Uh, came back and won the next night, but it um I just obviously remember that because I thought it was such a big deal. We were opening up a rink. Um, yes, yeah. I I want to say first off that I'm thankful that I was able to play both in the Cole Center and um at the Levon. Oh, I think oh, just yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, three. I because it was my senior year. Was Levon was the first oh, year okay. Levon open, okay. and I mean, there's nothing like the Cole Center, but the Levon. I love how tight it is and how like the fans are packed. It's packed every every game. Um, I'm pretty sure it sells out every game now. Um, especially, mm -hmm. I mean, my senior year it did a little bit, but um, we like. I think we were like when it, we found out that it was going to be built. Like we were so thankful for it because it just created a better atmosphere for women's hockey. Um, and we knew we had enough fans to fill that thing every single weekend. So um, yeah, it was, it was incredible to play in it. It was, it was so much fun. Is there a statue of you outside of it? Is there a statue of you outside the ring? No. <laughs> what about you, Cassie? What about you? <laughs> no, no, no. Next year for Decker. <laughs> no. Nice. I loved it though. Like, like Bree said, like the atmosphere and stuff was absolutely incredible. And same here. I'm so thankful to play in both because I feel like they were totally different experiences, but in very thankful for both. But looking back on it now, like the little bond just made it so much easier on all of our lives too. And because for those of you who don't know, we used to play at the Cole center, but we'd practice mm -hmm. at the shell, which was connected to Camp Randall. So we would be having to go back and forth between like different locker rooms and they'd have equipment trucks transferring our gear like pretty much every other day. And so that was just craziness in itself. And so then once we got the Laban, we had our, our locker room underneath that connected to the coal center. So if we had to practice in the coal center, we would just walk in the tunnel, go on the ice there or whatever. So same thing with men's hockey. So now, they use that as their practice rink. And so I think just having that that environment for us too was a, a really big game changer where, you know, we have our own sauna and then we have our medical room and it's right by the weight room. So it's a really great setup. And then the fans, like it was so much fun. And the thing that's so cool is like, you're way more like on, like the fans were on top of you more. So mm -hmm. that was really exciting. The games would get so loud and so rowdy and, um, they did a really amazing job with it. So very happy to have been able to play in the Levon. Yeah, I Not won rub it into you too. <laughs> yeah, I was I was when you were talking, I kept looking at Erica like mm -hmm. I know over it and you're mentioning I'm laughing, thinking, well, good thing we won our three national championships. So you guys can yeah. play in Levon. <laughs> yeah. Thank, we, thank we, you we for that. The way a little bit. But Riggs, I hope you enjoyed our hard sauna. work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like the sauna and sauna, stuff. Sauna, like. cold tub, like mm. you know, you, I'm you gonna say how it is. That's all. Yeah, yeah. well, you're talking oh. about the, the bells and whistles, and yeah. oh, exactly. I know. Mm -hmm. Talk about bells and whistles. Little did I know, yeah. the bottle is coming. Yeah, you're breaking. Yeah, you're, you're breaking up the over there. Yes, <laughs> the is much easier now for them. Okay, back on back on track. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, no, I, I was I was gonna say um, I've. The only time I've ever played at the Levon is the Johnson Christmas Eve skate, and there's absolutely no one in this in the stands. But it, it's a beautiful stadium. I've been able to go a couple times just to watch games, and just being a fan in the stadium is pretty cool. So I can't imagine being a player on the ice, uh, being one of the badgers. So it's pretty cool that you guys had an opportunity to experience it. And obviously, the bells and whistle. It's pretty easy to recruit to go to UW these days. Not mentioning a lot of other things, great things about it. But so um, the next question is, what was your favorite memory at UW? And it's probably not the first game into LeBron, LeBron if you guys <laughs> lost it. But what was your favorite memory at UW? Um, okay, well, mine's at the top of my head here. So uh, <laughs> mine was um, WCHA finals at Ritter Arena in 2011. Kelly Nash scored the OT winner, but we came back from like a 3-1 deficit in the third period to like, I don't know, something like that, right, Riggs? And we like tied yeah, it up. It was up. like 4-1, to one, I think. I think it was like 4-1. Yeah. Oh, it was 4-1, yes, right. I think. It was 4-1 to one because we won 5-4. So we came back to put into OT and yeah, and Kelly Nash scored the game winner. It was 
And like we went on to win that year, the national championship. But like that mm-hmm. game, it was like that was Wisconsin like hockey for us. Like we came back at Ritter Arena four one. Like is incredible. So and I'll just never forget. I wish Kelly Nash was on here, but she just scored and she just like this and just drops just drops everything. I was going to say I think I was, I think I was at that game because I remember her going like this and then somebody giving her a hug and turning. Yeah, well, Kelly yeah. Nash was supposed to be amongst us here and um she had her wisdom teeth up today so that, <laughs> yeah, <she's- laughs> had to get the wisdom teeth up. but yeah. that, so that is why she is not with us but i was i i was in the stand that game i remember kelly's story and yes i think uh out of all of us ritter rink was actually a happy place for us i think we won more than we lost and that is a good example of that yeah yeah i was at that game too it was amazing i loved it yeah it was amazing Anybody else? Memories, Alex? Yeah. Um, I would say the besides winning like our one national championship, like nothing compared to your three national championships <laughs> over here, guys. Like my one, so that one was awesome. But um, you know, just I feel like we had because we didn't we win like WCHA in the overtime, and then we had to did we go overtime with UMD in semis too? At home, no, but we just beat them two to one. It was like a really close. Game. Yeah, really close yeah. game. But um, favorite memory was our semifinal game against Harvard, my senior year, and there was just something about being on that team that year that actually felt a lot like my freshman year team. Um, it was just a really fun season, and it was the first time we held a semifinal game at the Lebon because. Um, in the past, we would have to go to a different rink for any sort of NCAA games. And so it was our first time hosting and it was like so much fun. And we ended up beating them, I think three to three to one maybe, but it was just something about being a part of that game and the energy of the crowd. And um, yeah, it was really fun. I think I was at that game as well. That was a good game. I've watched so a lot fun. of Alex and Texas <laughs> Patrick games. You guys were fun to watch. Lots was that your paddle save game? No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, I had paddle save. Paddle save is a, is, it looks like a good save, but Alex was probably really out of position. Yeah. And reached, <laughs> I got pulled out of the net this way. And then Only to goalie. She was MC probably out of net. position. And I had to dive across and boom. It was very lucky. Like she did not give, that again. give up though. You did not give up. But no. that's a side goalie note. But uh, Eric, could you have a, a <laughs> favorite memory? memory. Um <laughs> my favorite memories are always like weird random locker room moments that are just super goofy usually, you know, not typically on ice stuff. But if you're going with the on ice theme here, I'd say my favorite game was probably when we played Harvard in the NCAA quarterfinal. Uh, what was it? Quadruple? No. Was it quadruple overtime? Uh, yeah. three. It was like, it was like four or five minutes in the quadruple overtime where uh, Dog scored, right? Bauer passed it to Zog and Zog scored on a one-timer in the slot, right? The win mm-hmm. was it one nothing. So no one scored a goal the entire game, right? There was a like one nothing yeah. game. Yeah, that was amazing. Everybody in between periods was like passing out, eating gummy bears, Skittles all over the locker <laughs> yeah, room. I think we I think we ran we ran out of food. So then they tried yeah. to find whatever if they went to the vending or whatever they did. And that mm-hmm. is actually I, I figured Erica and I might have the same memory. So that was yeah. that was my favorite memory as well. I think it was like five hours or so game and it was one nothing win. So and, and like we were saying, we we're at the Cole Center. Nice shout out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was to it was. Like, we, I think we outshot them a little bit more than they had on us. But You guys, like that game, um, side story about that game, I was on the way to practice listening to that game. And it was on the radio. Like, that's it was on the radio. I wasn't tuning in. Oh, yeah, I love like, that. Yeah, it was on the radio. You're like, I remember. <laughs> 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 Mom, it's cutting out. But that's literally like I remember hearing Zog scored. Like it was so it was really cool. If I remember, radio, it was sweet. Yes, I, I do remember the goal. It was Sarah Bauer. If anybody listening knows Sarah Bauer, she was probably one of the best. I love the pucks for like an, a minute. 
she had it for a minute in the zone and then Janelle, she finds a way to get open. And then usually if, and Sarah found her and she has an opportunity to score with, she usually takes advantage of that. So, but yeah, we finally had five or 6,000 people in the Kohl center. So it was the lower bowl was maybe full for us. So yeah. that was probably one of the best yeah. atmosphere games for us. Um, yeah. The energy was awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That was before they did the fill the bowl. We never did one of those. So that was for our career. That was probably the best fans and the best atmosphere. So that was, that was a pretty good game. And we obviously being on the winning side of it helped as well. Um, oh, but yes, yeah. yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Um, so um, this is kind of an advice question. Um, what advice would you give somebody um, that is thinking about playing uh, college hockey at the next level, not or just college hockey. Just anyone. Like I have advice that's very specific for different people. <laughs> uh, their, you know, situation. <laughs> So what very kind general, of <laughs> very uh, just general advice? Just general, just general. How to, how to get seen? Uh, the best way to train? I don't anything and everything. Yeah. Um, I would say, would say, I would say, college is going to be such a unpredictable and interesting experience. Um, not always like the college you see on television, you know, this like crazy ideal of like this really fun experience, you know, there's gonna be some great things that are awesome about it, but there's also gonna be some really hard things that you have to go through through college too. And um, I'd say, you know, just just have that in mind as you, as you approach college, you know, it's not gonna be a perfect situation, but it's your time to lo learn from hard things and grow from them and, um, you know, it's, it's the part of your life that sets you up for the rest of your life. So um, remember that too. Remember to have fun. You know, you have, I know that there's there's one regret and I don't think I spent enough time with my teammates when I was there because I was always so focused on school or going to the rink and making sure that I was getting enough hours of sleep and get eating healthy and, and not drinking and all, and all those kinds of things. But I think now as an adult, when I reflect back, I think I could have you know, lightened up a little bit, you know, and had a little bit more fun, myself open up to my teammates. I mean, Bets, you know, I never went out in college or anything like that. So I was very focused, um, which isn't a bad thing at all. But it, my advice would be to to be open and, um, you know, don't be afraid to 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 have fun and really just enjoy the moment. Because like I said, this is your time to just enjoy and try to, you know, figure things out um, to set you up for the rest of life. And that's when things get really hard. So, you know, <laughs> that's my advice. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think uh, for me, like, you know, if you're when you're if you're looking to go and play college hockey, I would say just be you like coaches are out there looking for players to fill certain roles on their team. And so when you're playing and you're playing high school games or club games and coaches are coming to watch you, don't try to be the player next to you. Just be who you are, play your game, and um, you're going to go to the right school that's going to be best for you, and and you're going to be the best role that you're going to be on that team. And um, I think coaches get frustrated when they see players trying to be other players because they want you to be who you are because that's the best you. I love that one. Yeah, Bree, you pretty much took what I was going to say, but oh, made sorry, it sound yeah, better. You, sound, you made it sound better. But I was just going to say, yeah. like, don't get stressed out about it. Like, it's, it should be a fun experience and a fun opportunity, you know, getting to maybe go and visit other schools or talking to these coaches. But really just don't stress your, yourself out to where, you know, you're going to hinder your ability on the ice and uh, making sure that you're continuing to improve on things that it is that you need to work on and focus on yourself. Um, I think that's just, like, a big thing that – you know, I still try to work on is just having that growth mindset and trying to learn from others and take advice. And um, so, yeah, just enjoy the process and make sure that you're looking out for your best interest because college at the end of the day is four to five years, depending on how long I personally took five years. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so make sure that you're choosing the school that fits 
fits you and your personality and, and get the goals that you have in mind. That is all very good advice. Uh, definitely things that I think people can learn from. Um, the other thing just off of Erica when she's talking about Ivy Leagues, Ivy Leagues and SAT is just don't forget about the education, the grade side of it. So don't spend all your time at the ring. Don't spend all your time in the books. Find a happy medium, get a balance to it to make sure you actually get into balance. It. That's it. That's the that was the queen of balance. She didn't have a talk. I would have. Just you were great at that. that. You truly were. You truly yeah. are great at balance. And that's I why think you're so a balance with everything definitely uh, makes life easy, and then it, you don't get all stressed out or overwhelmed. Yeah, you um, taught me that. I appreciated that. You are you are welcome. I don't know if I was that person. You. you are welcome. <laughs> Man, Vets, I miss you. I miss you all. I miss you all. Let's go back to college for one year. I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe. We'll just we'll just Mark will take us back. Mark will take us back. I know it. That's true. That's true. We'll give him a call after this. Okay. All right, moving on to a little bit of uh you the US talk since we all were um, members. Eric and I were members, are members uh, of the U.S. team. Um, just kind of when did you realize that you had uh, an opportunity to play for the U.S. team in reference to maybe a world or an Olympic team and kind of growing up, I think Alex kind of touched on it a little bit, was it always a, kind of a dream of yours to play for uh, Team USA? I can start, youngest. Yeah. Um, so for me, we were really lucky to have U18s. Mm -hmm. And so getting that opportunity to represent our country at the highest level of U18s at the time was like an incredible experience, an incredible opportunity. And I feel like being a part of the national team or the U18 national team at that point gave me the opportunity to kind of see the national team because we'd have training camps together. We'd be separated, but it'd be you know, getting to see you guys at camp and stuff. And um, so I think that was a really cool opportunity just being like, okay, I'm at my first step here. Like this is what I need to make the 18 team. And then hopefully I'm on path to uh, making, you know, U22 team, national team and things like that. And, but one, one moment that kind of really stands out being like, okay, I think I can do this was I was playing boys hockey. Um, I was playing boys AAA hockey and I was at a tournament in Minnesota and they created a select team to play against the national team. So I played against you guys. And really? it was the 2010 season. So it was 2009. Yep. No. Yeah, 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 2009, yeah. Because you guys were in Blaine. Yeah, mm -hmm. it would have been our... Uh, yeah, there were. Playing. Good old Blaine. For the yeah. So I got to play. So I got selected from like all the boys teams. So I got selected as a goaltender, one of the goalies. And so I played the first half. And it was so fun playing against you because that was my first opportunity to like play against national team players. And it was so much fun. And the only goal I let in in the, in like the half that I played was Natalie Daritz came in on a breakaway and took a slap shot from the hash marks and went bar down on me. <laughs> yeah. For those that know Natalie, that's not a bad thing. So I was Sorry. like, all right, here we go. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's cool. I like that. That is cool. That is cool. I set my yeah, so memory. My memory is not good, but I, I just <laughs> remember it uh, a little bit. I don't even remember the outcome. I just remember getting like scored on bar down by Natalie Darwitz, but it's fine. <laughs> That's a good memory. He's a good one to get scored on by. Yeah. That happened to me plenty of times. Um, so, well, I played U18s as well. Um, and so that was a huge moment for me, I think, too. Just like, uh, I think, like, when I was younger, I wanted to play for the U.S. team. I wanted to play at the Olympics. Um, but I think you get lost or you get caught up in the moment when you're, like, just a younger kid that you, like, don't there's you don't see the past as far as like how do you actually get there and then there's like little national team or um little national camps that you go to in the summer mm -hmm. and stuff like that which I'm like okay this is so cool um but then U18s happened and I was like okay like I think I actually have an opportunity here so in 2008 it was Lake Placid <laughs> Four Nations I was in high school so I was six, 16 or 17 at that point um and the U.S. coach at the time coach Stone had just coached me at U18s 
at world championships, like, uh, I don't know, a few months back. So gives me a call on the phone. It was like, Hey, like we're bringing you four nations. Um, I know you're really young, but we just want to give you, you know, experience. You're not going to play though. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like whatever. So I go a little bit, but you'll die. I go <laughs> and, um, Sarah Parsons got hurt the weekend before in a college game. And so a player got hurt in the college game before and I go and I have to actually play. So now I'm like, Oh my God, I have to play. And I'm going to be like, <laughs> I was like fourth line playing and it was fine, but I was like so nervous. Um, but I actually realized I'm like, okay, I can actually, you know, like do decent out here. And I think that was when I was like, okay, I, I want to be here and I want to, you know, make this team and like make a difference on this team. But yeah, that was the four nations. Eric McKenzie scored the shootout winner. Yeah. Ah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the thing. Erica, you were you on my team? But you probably don't remember yeah. me. <laughs> oh, we have a picture in the Olympic Village together. Now that I'm thinking about it, Schlepper was on the team too, right? Yes. 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 Okay. I have. Yes. Oh, this Andy is Schlepper. Yeah. She's the same oh, name. I forgot was like, you were on that team. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. Everyone called me Sam. Cute. <laughs> that's cute. You yeah, right. Not. You are going to be such a stud. Don't even. You always no. knew the whole time you were going to be there. Come on. Come oh, on. Okay, go, yeah. go with your story. Well, my story. Um, honestly, like, I, I think growing up as a kid before I ever saw a woman play hockey, because I felt like I was the only one on the earth that did. Um, during that time, I was like, oh, if there's an Olympic, I'm automatically going to be on that team, obviously, right? Like, that's kind of the way I thought. Like, I was pretty full of myself in terms of the sport, because I literally didn't see women playing. So I thought that like, I was the only good one. And then I saw, then I heard of this girl, Megan Duggan. And, and, and I'm like, oh, there's another one. Like, <laughs> okay. Anyways, I think I kind of had this weird chip on my shoulder um, at a young age. And then I, I went to high school and I think I decided that, wow, being an Olympian would probably be the coolest and most honorable thing in the world ever to be able to do when I saw um, Courtney Kennedy playing in the 2002 Olympics. Um, Courtney Kennedy is my coach, Paul Kennedy's daughter, and I looked up to her so much. Um, she coached us in the summers. We skated with her in the summers. Um, it was very inspiring to be around her and people like Julie Chu, uh, Kathleen Koth, Shelly Looney. Uh, they were all um, they were all training in Massachusetts. So Megan and I got to play with them a lot, and I just remember how starry eyed we were around them all the time and. Um, you know, I'd say Megan was a huge part of my journey. Obviously, we grew up playing together. She's also a Badger, uh, uh, two-time captain of Team USA, three-time Olympian. What? <laughs> oh, look at me getting <laughs> out her three-time Olympian. <laughs> no, shout out to Meg. I'm really my best friend. <laughs> Anyways, I know uh, her. <laughs> I take credit for her, actually. Um, no, but we um, we went through you know the whole process together and really in high school, we were just both fully obsessed with everything hockey and um, we're incredibly focused. We motivated each other. We pushed each other. I mean, support each other through anything. And, um, you know, I think really high school was that that moment for me where I just felt super motivated and inspired to be an Olympian. Cool. Very cool. I like the little shout out to Meg. I'm sure she's. Yeah. Put in I little she's dirt. Right, right now. She's kind of like Yeah. Yeah, she's probably putting little dirt down to bed. Yeah. She hates when I do this. <laughs> Captain. Um, <laughs> like, you guys, I'm not even going to stick up for myself. <laughs> mine was probably not like Erica. I think mine was, uh, I, I was later on. Um, I didn't think, I grew up not wanting to, or not even knowing and being aware that the U.S. team in the Olympics, I just, for some reason, I don't think I, I watched it or was kind of aware of it. Maybe soccer a little bit because of Mia Hamm and the, the I think it was the 99 shootout one um, mm -hmm. that got so much, so much talk. But I think for me, it was probably more in college when I um, started to make some of the actual U.S. camps because Erica and I never had an opportunity to play for the U18 is under 18 and it's a U.S. team and they go – and they play other countries that are under 18 as well. And Eric and I, um, we aged out of that. It, it was not, <laughs> it was not around when we were 18. Yeah, it was. I was yeah. the I, I was on the first one in 08. You were the first. So we're okay. aging, you in, guys. Yeah. In 2008. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
we were at our, our world championships in China. So we were on the yes, we were on a, a the the other team at that time. But we we never had an opportunity to play on U18. So our <laughs> first exposure, or at least mine, was more in college. Maybe 2006. I went to an a, a real U.S. camp, and then made a Four Nations, and then the first World was in 2007, which I think we were both at as well, Erica in, in Canada. Um, so for me, okay. just making, or knowing I'd be on the U.S. team or making the U.S. team wasn't even a thought or reality until I got to college and then started to make some of those teams. But when I realized I had an opportunity to make the team and possibly get to the Olympics and make the Olympics team, that was a pretty cool moment and obviously something that I ran with and tried to enjoy every second of it and had a good time with that as well. Um, and talking about the Olympics and all of us being Olympians, um, just kind of talk about your favorite Olympic memory. I'll go. I think my favorite memory was just kind of waiting in the tunnel before. You oh, do we have the same time. memory? Oh my gosh. Yep. Yep. No. We, were no. we, were, we were getting so impatient. Like, we're like, this is going to be like the biggest moment. Like, this moment is the moment, right? That everyone thinks about when you go to the Olympics. It's like, wow, the opening ceremony. We're in this gear, these Ralph Lauren white pants, big, fluffy down jacket, uh, you know, this thick, thick sweater that overlaps at the chin, you know, and I'm like, I'm so hot, right? So I start getting like really irritable and like really anxious. I'm like, I'm nervous, you know, and like, you know, I have actually, I have footage of us vets like uh, going through the tunnel. It's really, really funny to listen to all of us like so excited. I mean, we must have burned through so much energy that night or that day, but um so yeah, we were just sweating and we're all like, oh, is it almost our turn? Because the United States goes like at the end of the alphabet, right? The United States is at the end. So we waited so long and, you know, we were all like, oh, and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you're up, you're up, you're going out. And we're like, ah. and then we just start like, oh my, like we just start, you know, going crazy when we, we get up there and we're just like, this is just as magical as I literally thought it was, you know, and it's never <laughs> happened. Like, what? Am I really here? It's wild. Um, really cool. No, I feel like it's inside of Disney. It is. And it is, it is like Disney, which my husband mm -hmm. would like that shout out because he loves Disney. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, in the Olympic, during the opening ceremonies, we get to the hockey rink, which we had to wait to get to the, where the actual opening ceremonies was, which was, which I think was the football stadium right next to us. So we get there, we're all excited that we think we're going to go, but then we just sit there and it, it's on the jumbotron. It shows your alpha, the letters of the alphabet and we're last, the only country after us is Canada. So we're just sitting there for however long just, and then we finally start moving and we're in this tunnel and we're sweating and we're like, we're almost there, but you had to walk all the way over to the football <laughs> stadium. So you get all amped up. I think, do you remember? I think there was a chant going back and forth between us saying USA and Canada. Saying Canada, Canada, saying Canada. Canada. Yeah. So we like, had a little USA. Yeah. USA. <laughs> <laughs> I think we won the competition, though. I think we were pretty loud with our USA. Yeah. Uh, but then oh, but I was a competition with the snowboarders over who went last in line. Yeah, for the which I don't know. There's maybe you got on the camera more if you were last with opening ceremonies. I don't know why that was such a. I think it was just pride. You wanted to be last, take up the yes. rear or something. Yeah. You know? We were bored waiting for the opening ceremony. When, when, you actually, <laughs> when you actually walk, when you actually walk out, it was it was pretty special and it's pretty surreal and uh, definitely opening ceremonies with Erica. We were both there walking together. It was definitely my favorite memory. Yeah. How about you, Alex and Brianna? I mean, my first thought is the opening ceremony for sure. Like it's so cool because you get to be with all the Team USA athletes and I and you got to meet people and we're chatting and same thing though. Like I feel like it was never gonna come that we were gonna actually walk out into the stadium. But once we did, somehow like our team was at the front of walking in. And so that was a really cool moment being up with a flag bearer and um Aaron Hamlin. So that was really fun. And then Otherwise, I mean, I thought it was just so cool, like being able to go and support other U.S. athletes because I feel like you're just such a family at that point and like going to watch other events. And I feel like our team did a really good job of 
going out and supporting other teammates and U.S. teammates and and things like that. So, yeah, it was it's fun. I, re- yeah. I remember seeing pictures and and seeing you guys because you guys were yeah. right front with the flag, right, right up front. Like yeah, it was so it made a lot more sense than being in the back. I don't. But know why. it was like crazy though because like you're in like this big <laughs> thing, right? And then all of a sudden you're going into the tunnel and you get like so we like had to like take a couple turns. And we weren't even close to the front, but all of a sudden, like the last turn, like, like there was a group of us that got like squeezed to the front and we're like looking at each other and like, we're like, did this just happen? Like no. we're in the front row, like how? <laughs> so that was really cool being like in the, in the front with that. But yeah, we were not planning on trying to do that at all. Cause everyone's pushing and trying to be in the front, but yeah, yeah it was everyone for us. was pushing. <laughs> it was that um though that was like super cool though that you guys are right there but um i i loved obviously opening ceremonies as well it was my favorite one of my favorite moments um well because we didn't we didn't go to opening ceremonies in 2014 so i was like super excited for 2018 um and i'll never forget i was walking out with this skier i can't even remember his name right now but we were just chatting about like this is awesome and you just feel so connected because it's not your sport you're connected to. It's like your country. And it was like a really cool moment. And I actually ended up walking out closing ceremonies with the same guy. Don't guys to this day still don't know his name just because I probably, that wasn't, I know that should be really important to me, but it wasn't important to me because what was important was that I'm like, I'm talking to another athlete who's trained so hard and we just went through the entire Olympics together because we're bigger than our sports at this, at this point. Um, so that was like a really cool moment, but like Alex said, like supporting the other, um, the other athletes and the other sports, I'll never forget. We went to the curling event and they won gold. Oh, um, so after, much fun. Yeah. After we had won a few days before it was a really cool moment. Yeah. I remember in Russia, we were at, it was just a, I think, uh, just a regular X, not just the regular season game or whatever you want to call it. Your, your pool. We were at the, um, is it TJ OC? Yeah. The the shootout and yeah. he kept going and going and going. See, those are the different. That's so cool. Movies. You guys were there for that. Yeah, yeah. that was. We were the. I mean, everyone was silent and we're the only ones. Where <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There wasn't very many U.S. fans there, but uh, we yeah. were definitely cheering and doing our best. Um, so um, I this is for Alex and uh, Decker. Are you, what is uh, ahead for the U.S. team? Are we going to have an opportunity to see you guys in the world? Kind of with the COVID, is it moving forward? The Olympics, kind of what's ahead for you, you guys? Yeah, we're we're unsure too, Beth. Um, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we don't know much. Obviously, with COVID, everything going on, it's been a really, um, really hectic, slow year. Um, I think the hardest part, and Rick's going to agree, like it's just continuous training right now for – you know, a camp that we think we're going to have that then gets canceled. Um, but hopefully, and I'm crossing my fingers, world championships occurs in the spring like it always does. Um, you know, it might get pushed back or something, but i um, hoping to play. I mean, we were supposed to play last year in Halifax and hopefully, and they're supposed to host again this year. And I really hope that works out because I've heard nothing but incredible things about Halifax. I'm sure uh, Canada would yeah. always does a great job at hosting world championships it's always really fun so is that where it would possibly be again is canada yeah i mean this is i'm i'm yeah it would be in canada again no. somewhere yeah. but it's yeah. all like we don't know if it would if we would use like the bubble that the world juniors used mm-hmm. in edmonton or if they would be in halifax and they would have something coordinated there but um honestly we're just hoping to play and hoping to figure out a way that we can it's been a long year we are excited to hopefully see you play as well because I've learned while we've been here, I've seen you two play a lot with the Badgers and now you want to keep supporting you and cheering you guys on with the U.S. team. Uh, we have a little bit of time left, but Eric, I wanted you to talk a little bit about the Brooklyn Blades and kind of what you're doing in New York and spreading yeah. the hospital among your community a little bit before we... Yeah, the Brooklyn to- Bladers. The Brooklyn Bladers. Yeah. Um, we... Ice is really, really expensive, as you know, if you play ice hockey. Uh, to rent a sheet of ice, it costs a lot of money. So um, in New York, Kelly Nash and I, Kelly Nash is another Wisconsin grad, national champ, two-time national champ. Uh, she's from California. She grew up actually rollerblading. And she started playing, listen to me, doing all my friends' bios. <laughs> yeah, <she grew> up <laughs> playing, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> 
<laughs> she grew up playing roller hockey in California. There's there wasn't as many ice there wasn't as much ice hockey when she was growing up as it, there is now in Cali. But um, so her and I we both live in Brooklyn now, and um, in this this summer we just and during COVID we started rollerblading everywhere. Um, and so we decided to create a logo and like sort of just put a brand behind it, like everything rollerblading in Brooklyn. So we started as just like a super casual like kind of whatever, we're just gonna post things of us rollerblading because it's cool and fun. And like we want people to, we wanna raise awareness about like women skating in the city. And, and New York's a great place to do that because there's a ton of eyeballs around, you know? So, and also we just love to do it. And so it's great exercise too. So um, we, we've we started doing that. And then we started playing games, pick up games like every weekend on, on like a public park in Brooklyn. So we hit up different public parks and we have our little crew here and it's starting to grow like quite a bit. You know, we have a lot of beginners. We have a lot of division one people. We have Olympians wanting to come, but can't yet because it's COVID, but they want to bring their children. And you know, um, that's someday gonna happen. Um, but it's really awesome because we get so much exposure in the city. There's people everywhere. And what's cool is that we were approached by um, a group of little kids and they wanted to learn how to play roller hockey. So now Kelly and I have grown this very small little group of like four kids into um, two different sessions of eight. And we're teaching roller hockey every Sunday for like an hour to like these little kids who are um, finding a passion for the sport. So it's been really, really fun for me, actually, getting that real like love and joy for the sport back into my life. I feel like I'm living vicariously through all these kids, um, and I really enjoy, really enjoy working with kids. So it's been really fun. That's awesome. They've got a Instagram, Brooklyn Blades. So you can give them a follow. Uh, Bladers. Kind of Bladers. Oh, <laughs> Brooklyn later on Instagram and uh, kind of see what they're uh, doing and uh, doing a lot of great things in Brooklyn. So that that is pretty cool, Erica. I can't. I don't even know where the roller blades are, but I gotta try and find them. Got it. You know, we we, 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 like, we break them out. We try the hockey's like last week when I was doing it. Like I was teaching crossovers and I was just doing lateral crossovers and I went to stop at the end and I because it's on roller blades, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay, guys. Not, tough not crowd. Next isn't not, laughing anymore. Not the same. No. Wow. <laughs> um, I I think we might be near our time. I don't know if Anna is going to pop back in and. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if you still had time to take a few questions from the crowd. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. First, I, I, I wanted for them, but yes, they would yeah. love to. Um. <laughs> First, I wanted to share just a few comments, stories that people have been sharing in the comments because I know you haven't been able to see them. But um, Aaron, uh, to your story, Brianna, or Brianna, um, his daughter just recently wrote uh, her fourth grade letter and she wants to play in the WNHL. That's so very cute. cute. <laughs> that is very cute. So I thought that was very sweet. And I also had a coworker text me a story about you, Jesse. And he said, when he was a kid, you played on the Monona boys hockey team and you shut out everyone you played. You were such a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> we were a very good hockey team and let in a lot of goals, but that was very nice of him. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> okay. Um, first question for everyone was, uh, what are each of your plans going forward? Well, we kind of heard Alex and for, for me uh, right now, I'm just, I'm at home with my boys and I don't know what hockey wise it looks like if I get into coaching with the, my helping my boys teams as they get older, if they get into hockey. Um, but I see um, I've been talking to some people, uh, maybe some teaching in my future, actually going to the schools and uh, becoming a teacher's assistant or something in that regard, I think would be kind of fun to work in the school district and um, be a part of that in some way. And hockey wise, if coaching youth comes up or something like that, that would be uh, kind of fun. But uh, immediately I'm just home with the boys right now and then hopefully this crazy world will come back to normal at some point and hopefully have an opportunity to uh, work in the school district in some way. 
Okay. Um, another question we had was in non COVID times, um, do you guys find time to visit one another outside of hockey? If so, what do you like to do together? Um, we try, not really. It's hard. Well, Erica's out. East. <laughs> Alex and I used to see each other uh, quite a bit when I was still playing and we were training. We would. Uh, we were fortunate enough where we were able to train together um, with uh, Larry Clemens out of the same rink, which was kind of fun because it's usually just us by ourselves, especially as goalies. Um, but um, we've done a couple. I miss you. I miss you as a training partner, by the way. I, I do not miss the training part, but I do. I miss you. Uh, <laughs> but we've done it. We did a bad zoom a while back, and Kelly, that is not on here tonight, was going to try and do another one. Um, but I think all of us would agree that we would love to see each other more often than we do. Okay, yes. one last question. Uh, do you have, or did you have, any unique pregame rituals? I always carry a tennis ball around. Like, I'll throw it against the wall after warm-ups, but from the time I get to the ring to the time that we start playing, like, I have, like, a tennis ball in my hand. Is it always the same tennis ball? Yeah. No, so I used to have a superstition of like it had, like I wouldn't even say a superstition. Actually, yeah, I was probably more superstitious as a kid, but <laughs> like at the time it was like, it has to be this one with this logo, like can't lose this tennis ball. And then it got to a point where I was losing tennis balls. And I was like, I just need to move past this. Like Paul Hickman was our equipment manager at Wisconsin. And the amount of times I asked him for a tennis ball, he ended up just like covering my stall one day in like tennis balls, <laughs> like filling it because he's like, I'm so here, just take them. Like, I'm sick of you asking, like, here's all our ball, like tennis balls. Bells but, yeah. and bells, even tennis balls. Yeah. <laughs> I, was weird about I was weird about them. I just, I, they scared me. I like thought that if I couldn't do something, then I'd get too much into my head and would throw me off completely off. So I intentionally had none. So that I was prepared in whatever conditions were going to be thrown at me, you know. I didn't want to have like a security blanket or anything because I felt like that would like be counterproductive. And then I was like the complete opposite of Erica, like or was I am like I literally have like a routine down to a T. Um, they're not superstitions though. It's honestly just routine for me. Um, like I don't have, if I can get if I get pulled in a different direction before the game, it's fine. I just that's my way of dialing in for the games. I'm pretty serious, right, Riggs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm pretty serious with you, though. So Yeah, you like, are. You are. We do our Like, routine, I, I yeah. would say the same thing, though. It's just, like, you get in, like, this routine, and it's yeah. just, like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Like, yeah. so there's no, like, waste of time. And I got to have a pregame coffee, though. Like, that's my – that is a one one thing. Maybe it's that. a – Maybe it's a young thing, Erica, because I had no routine, no superstitions. Yeah. And we were very light before games. We were very yeah. light. You and yeah. I. So everyone has their own approach, right? Everyone that's, has their own level. That's always light. That's always light. That is always light. Yeah. I know you Young athletes, they, they all have all these routines. For everyone listening, though, Vets gets scored on in practice, and she goes, hey, nice shot. <laughs> that's a good shot. That was good. That was a good one. Okay. Oh, okay that was great. Ah, you got me. <laughs> well, I said that you better too about getting scored. Just kidding. Okay. Well, I think that is all the time we have for questions. Um, but I did want to share one sentiment that was really obvious to me throughout the whole event. Um, but it's the impact that you all have had on the Madison community, the Wisconsin community, women's sports, women's hockey, um, just being a woman in general. Uh, there's been a lot of love and a lot of people have really looked up to you guys as role models. Um, and I think that was really obvious. So I think it's it shared from everyone who watched um, just a huge thank you. Thank you to all that you have done for women's sports, women's hockey. Um, you've made a huge impact. Thank you. Anna. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then just like overall, I wanted to say thank you all for joining us. Um, you are fantastic and for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us and to share some of these stories. It's been really fabulous. 
Um, and a huge, huge thank you to you, Jesse, for helping us plan this event tonight and bringing all these wonderful people here uh, and for being a lovely um, moderator. You did fabulous. Thank you. Thank uh, you. First time. And then I wanted to say thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. We really appreciate you joining us and I hope you've had some fun. And just before we wrap up, I wanted to mention that we do have an event coming up on Monday, February 15th uh, with the UW men's basketball head coach, Greg Gard, to discuss what it is like being a leader in an organization, um, leading them through challenging times. So you can find more information on this event by going to our website, www.ampam.com backslash dream bank. Uh, and I'll put that link in the comments too. Uh, thank you again to everyone. Um, have a wonderful and safe evening. Thank you again, ladies. You were fantastic. Um, and have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth.